Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, episode 412. Uh, each week uh, we meet here uh, to answer the questions, uh, or not, to review the questions asked on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. With us tonight we have uh, Tim Kappa. Tim is CEO of OnlineOwnership.com. Uh, winner of Best um, Local Agency uh, for Middle Earth um, and also uh, webmaster of onlineownership.com. Tim's a, a Google product uh, expert um, and a member of the uh, Google My Business uh, community. Um, Masataki Wasa. Uh, Masataki is webmaster of wasaweb.net. He's a, a Google product e expert in the AdSense uh, uh, community. Um, and you can find Masataki at, uh, um, oh goodness, what is it? Heavens, help me Masataki. <laughs> oh, how can I forget? Wasaweb.net. That's it. WhatsApp.net. W A S A W E B dot N E T. Sorry, Mr. Tucky. You know, uh, old brain, and it, it, it sometimes seizes up. Um, and Daniel. Uh, Daniel, without uh, Daniel's skills and uh, uh, coding expertise, uh, we wouldn't um, be um, as good as we are now. Um, I'm eternally grateful. Um, Okay, let's um, move on. We've got 12 uh, questions tonight. Uh, let me see. Um, we'll see that. That one will do us, I think. All right. Um, the first question tonight is, um, it's, um, titled um, a page that is not linked to your site in any way. Um, it's from Sean Clark, uh, who said, two questions, please. I have to charge him double, Tim. Um, he said, does a page that is not linked to your site in any way, such as a page in progress or maybe pages from a demo, affect search engine optimization in any way? The page is not indexed and is not in the sitemap. Question two, would links on that page that were not actual links hurt anything? Um, um, it's pages, domain.com slash about dash US and links are domain.com about dash US slash hashtag. Do those uh, links cause a loop back to about us? Um, are either of these things hurting search engine optimization in any way? My boss's SEO consultant seems to think that it is a really bad thing. Thanks all. No, I mean, typically a demo page shouldn't be indexed in the site. Um, but if it was, no, it's it's not an issue. If you have 50,000 of them, yeah, it might become an issue. Um, but if you have an odd one or two, no, that's not a problem. Um, also, most CMSs will properly canonicalize a forward slash hashtag back to the actual look, um, actual, to, to, to the actual um, reference page, the main the main page. So in that sense, that's not a problem either, uh, depending on your CMS and how old it is or how, how updated it is. Um, so on a, on a base level, having one or two, not an issue. Um, although ideally, if you've got a demo page or something that's not meant to be public, you ideally want to know index it. Um, if you've got something that is a demo page for clients you ideally want to put that potentially behind a uh a fire you know a, a, a maybe a, a login or something like that it makes it also look more professional for clients 
um, which also prevents search engines. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's a couple of ways of de dealing with it. No, I wouldn't sweat it. Um, if it's a couple, uh, your CMS should handle the hashtag properly. Um, so yeah, no, it should be, it shouldn't be a drama. Thank you, Tim. Um, anybody else? Okay, let's move on to number two on our run list. Dustin Lee Carlton asked the question, it's titled, uh, should a URL reflect the book title? Now, he has to say, uh, should a URL reflect the book title or attempt to capture broader search terms, as in uh, a book titled Sherlock Holmes um, should be uh, at uh, SherlockH.com or at ConsultingDetective.com? Uh, I think, yeah, I mean, we need a bit more info here. I mean, Perry says one, like, is this just for the book? One site for that book? Or are you going to have others? Um, yes, you'd go mad, wouldn't you, um, if you had a, a site for every book in and had to maintain a library? Yeah. Yeah, totally. And uh, I just took my head. Are these not... Are, are, are they um, copyrighted, these names? Like, uh, I, don't, I don't know how it works. Well, I, I think the, the, um, the, 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 they'd be, uh, the copyright would have expired. The, the writer mm -hmm. is long dead, and um, Masataki probably could help us there. Oh. Uh, I don't know. Um... Yeah. Well, going back to the question itself, I think it really depends. I mean, if there are no issues with, let's say, using Sherlock Holmes as part of your domain name, why not? Because that would be nice and memorable. It's for that branding purpose that you want to use that. Instead of sort of you know, thinking, oh, yeah, do I get any... Um, SEO benefit. I think the thing is, you know, does it does it make my site memorable? I suspect a lot of sort of Sherlock Holmes related domain names already taken. If we use Sherlock Holmes as an as an example, um, but then you could do um, um, associated searches or names you know it could be um the author and Doyle, or you could talk about baker street for instance um so i think it really depends on what's available and whether you can market that name yeah so i wouldn't i personally wouldn't sort of uh, have a narrow focus on the book title. Yeah, well, that's, that's another issue, isn't it? Because um, um, he's storing a, a lot of hope uh, on uh, the actual book title um, uh, and uh, n naming, even naming a page in a website. Uh, not likely. Um, Daniel was saying he cut the question uh, down a little, um, and you, you can read the full, uh, full the full account uh, on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. Yeah, and I'm not hundred percent sure what exactly um, Dustin is trying to do. Is he trying to sell books? Or is he trying to do something else? Well, I hope he is, because otherwise he's wasted a lot of effort. He's selling cars. 
No, 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 no. But I'm, I'm, I'm wondering whether he's actually selling the books as books or if it's more about the content. Let's say if it's out of copyright and you can reproduce it. Um, mm -hmm. Then are you, you know, is he reproducing the entire book on the site? Mm -hmm. So I'm not 100% sure what exactly he's trying to do. Um, well, he, he, I see a line there. He said, so I thought the URL should be a catchy clip of the series title. Um, and you know, I, I think we, we really, I don't know whether you guys agree with me or not, but uh, I would say that the URL has very little impact on, on, on the sale and uh, it's more about um, what's uh, on, on the page, um, what's uh, on, on the site um, surrounding it um, than the uh, URL or the title of, of the, the H1 of the page. Exactly. Um, yeah, so I, th I think we need to know what exactly um what the exact business um proposition is in this case but mm -hmm. I, I agree with you jim I, I i i don't think it's i don't think it's healthy to be hung up too much on the name um domain name i think you know it would be good if you could include um the names because that would make the site and the domain name more memorable um, but if you're talking about um, file names, then it really doesn't matter. I mean, if it's an if it's still if it's a book with an ISBN number, I'd probably use that instead. And just to clarify, um, um, Daniel, before uh, uh, and this wasn't the question that he uh, um, condensed. All right, I think we should move on. Um, Mr. Taki, what do you think? Yeah, I think so. Right. Um, well, while this uh, new one's coming up, uh, I must thank Perry Bernard for his um, uh, tireless um, uh, answering of questions week after week uh, on the WCA Questions Facebook group. He, uh, Michael Martinez, uh, Michael Stricker, Brendan Malone, um, all these people make, make WCA questions such a, a valuable um, resource, and we're all eternally grateful for each and every one. All right, let's go to number uh, three on our run list. Do you give guarantees for rankings? Uh, Faraz Ahmed said, uh, um, uh, Do you give guarantees for rankings? Something that you do not control. What is your approach to this in terms of uh, client handling? Uh, I think it's more management of client expectations. Um, and he said, or do you think that with uh, years of experience and over time, um, you are now, uh, um, what have I done wrong here? Let me read that. Um, you, you're now capable of giving guarantees for rankings on the basis of previous uh, working experiences on the same kind of project or niche. A PS, by the, by the way, one more thing. How do you guys guarantee the time that you will rank in X days slash months? Whoa. Okay, so... <laughs> Yeah, like I don't, I don't, I don't even, I don't. The odd thing, I, I never bring up rankings with 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 clients in that sense. It's yes, ultimately, you know, a, a thing needs to appear in search results. But the point you should be looking at with a client is traffic that converts, uh, and rankings are a byproduct of that. Like, and, and why would I, like, if I was guaranteed rankings and I would be sitting down discussing what kind of terms and, and like, 
are we doing five, 10? Like, I mean, that's no way, man. No. And why would I guarantee something that I have no literal external control over? Like Google, I don't know. What, how many updates did they do last year, the year before? Medic updates. Um, Penguin. Penguin. Um, I'm, I'm like, you know, Panda, all these bloody things. Like, why would I, why would, why, how would I ever guarantee that? And I know, I like, I, I, and I don't really even sell anything based on rankings. It's like, okay, so this is the service you offer. How are we going to make sure that, that we, we, we increase the visibility around that? Um, and I don't talk about the rankings. It's a question of how we're going to increase the visibility. Um, uh, whether it's just for that query, is is it for longer, long, longer tail? Are we going to create cornerstone content and then work content around that? Are we going to dominate the niche based upon every possible term for that? Like, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't even like mention rankings. I will, I will track things for my own benefit. I will monitor how things are, are fluctuating positioning because that gives me an idea on how I want to move it, what's moving forward, what's not really moving forward, what needs additional work, things like that. Um, but I, I don't ever, uh, you know, mention like rankings as in that's what I'm, you know, uh, selling or that's what you're paying for, you know, no. Like if you're onto that, you're gonna be, you're gonna get into a sticky wicket. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's, I mean, uh, it's all risks and no, no reward, isn't it? In a sense that it's not something you can control. It's not something you you can guarantee by nature. Um, so it it it's, seems extremely odd. Uh, for anyone to be so confident or foolish or both to offer such. Yes. Um, it, well, the, the, let me say that uh, Zachary Toto uh, said, uh, the only guarantee I provide is that services will be performed in a timely and professional manner. I provide that in the form of the promise uh, of the uh, offer. Michael Martinez said, uh, I never guarantee ranking. That's not a promise I would ever feel comfortable making. Yeah, well, I, I think that's um, just about cover this one. Let's go on with the next. Demetrius. Demetrius Maddox um, asked the question titled, should I start optimizing search engine optimization um, for the new location? Demetrius said, I'm redesigning a site that will go live in 10 days. Uh, this business will be moving locations. They will be moving a few towns over in about 30 to 60 days. Um, should I start optimizing SEO for the new location or should I start optimizing uh, after they have uh, officially uh, moved? Um, I think from memory, uh, uh, Tim, you, you answered that um, on, on the community. Yeah, so it's going to be a bit weird if you start up changing the site and optimizing on site if a user comes to it now and goes and like you know uh, everything is is you know mentioning this other town and other location rather than where you are now you could actually lose out especially in search results you could actually lose out in business over the next 30 to 60 days what happens if that goes tits up and then you're sitting changing that all back and then you're sitting with stuff indexed it's no so so no however what i would do is start updating addresses i would start obviously you can't change gmb until you move but i would start getting all your citations 
sorted because those take quite a while to be updated um, and revisited by, by, by search engines. So I would start updating that. Um, I would put a, we are moving to on your contact page so that at least the new address is starting to appear uh, on the site together with your old one. Um, and then of course, on the day you move, the old one comes off and then the new one just stays up, but at least you've prepped, um, you know, uh, other sites, things like that, and then have a plan. Um, you know, you could pre-do all your, if you were updating titles and on page, you can redo, you can have that all on a, you know, a, a spreadsheet or whatever the case may be. And on the day, it can literally just be updated, boom, 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 um, on, on site itself. Um, or you could do that possibly a week before, because obviously not all pages are going to be seen as. But I would certainly start on your citations. That's something you can certainly do, because those, probably some of them won't even be updated or revisited by Google in 60 days. So I, I would make a start on those now. GMB on the day. Uh, at least have your new address on your site. So search engines and visitors will start kind of understand the change. And then a week, you know, within within the seven days before you actually move, then start, you know, on the site. Um, but if you start doing that now, you could lose out, you know, on potential sales within those 30 to 60 days based upon it just looking incorrect in the search results for a user and they're just not bothering to click through to you. Excellent. Anybody else? No, that's a good, good, good answer. I don't know how we top that. Nathan Bradshaw asks a question. Um, it's number five on our run list. Is uh, titled, "Is this a good search engine optimization strategy?" Please add what is missing. Nathan said, hello all, uh, is this a good SEO strategy? Uh, step number one, uh, create a list of keywords. Type your keyword into Google a few times with vi different variations and see the results and, and search them on a keywords tool li like a Google Keyword Planner or Ahrefs, Ahrefs Keyword Planner, uh, etc." Uh, step two, analyze Google's first page. After searching your keyword in Google, see what is ranking. Um, is it a list of things um, or type content, or blog posts, product services page, etc. Step number three, create something different or better use. Now, this is where you lose me, skyscraper technique and so on. Uh, anyway. Um, use skyscraper technique for this purpose. Step number four, add a hook. Um, analyze why anybody should back, backlink to your organic, back to you organically. The hook could be something that, um, infographic. Um, oh. Yeah, Jim, Jim, stop reading. There's like eight of them, man. It's just, yeah, just, we'll be here forever. Okay. Uh, right. So, Nathan, look, the first thing, mate, I, I don't understand why you're looking at first step one. Keep, no, no, I, 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 I literally don't see. I, no. So, a client comes to me and goes, here's my site. Make it work. Right. I'm like, okay. So, I need to analyze the site. How do you start with keywords first? How are you not fixing, how are you not looking at that site, seeing what it contains, seeing how it's working, and making it work better with the assets that you already have? Once you've done that, you will know what your keywords are. Because once you get into it and start looking at what you have, you will kind of have all like, literally you create like, everything you're saying here is you're creating all of this. but you haven't started with the very first one going analyze the site and see what assets it has. Like pretty much, you know, depending on the site, everything that you've got in there is already in that site. It's just been badly structured from day one. 
um, um, uh, maybe maybe some of the pages are all fabulous, just never been optimized. You've got literally everything there. Like, no. So from from the very first off, the first thing you should be doing is looking at the site, analyzing the site, and and and, and working on those assets. There's no way, like someone comes to me and goes, hey, I've got a problem with my site. And I'd go, okay, I'm going to go through Nathan Stepia and literally six months later, I might open your site and see what's in it. Well, come on, man. Okay. Um, yes, I... I um, my, my approach to, to search engine optimization, and I think it's a matter of just getting your ducks lined up in a row, you know, making sure that everything's in your favor. I don't, see, the thing is that I don't understand is like, you know, people like, I think when Nathan say there, he mentioned siloing and create a hook and all this sort of shit. I'm like, what is all of this crap? Who is creating these, these, freaking things that are like like why and who's right and where are they reading it from like please god tell me it was not neil patel <laughs> 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 i'm like you know this is not freaking rocket science it's not and it's not some flipping wizardry that people you know what i mean you are making sure that a site is found in the best possible way and understood by Google for a user search query. That is the main aim. That is it. Simple, pure, in its, in its easiest form. And that is what your job is to do. Understand how that site is going to fit within that query and how to make it fit within that query. Like, so Google believes that this is the best possible result to show for that query or and or multiple queries. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in, I think that's the problem. Um, like Jim said, it's getting ducks in a row. Um, but this question is sort of not... You know, they're not looking after the ducks. They're sort of trying to find out which eggs might work and see what hatches. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let me think of that guy's name. Is it Patel? Do you know what? Yeah, funny enough, he's got like the SEA community takes the piss out of him big time. But, you know, it, it, the funniest thing is, okay, he's like a duck, it's all off a duck, off water off a duck's back. Um, but you know, he sells the shit, people buy that stuff, man, all day long. Yeah, Neil Patel, uh, I see this, his website uh, says this Who is Neil Patel? He is a New York Times best selling author. <laughs> The Wall Street Journal calls him a top influencer on the web. Forbes says he's one of the top ten. Da 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 da. Um, yeah, I, I think people should be aware that when people make outlandish claims, they're the people that you should be staying away from. Um, if 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 you have to um, do outlandish things to make your site work. How long do you think Google's going to tolerate that? And you know the other thing is, you look at a lot of these other, the, you know, these other people that are pushing out um, uh, this kind of stuff, like how to create a what did he call Nathan called it some silo or haystack or freaking whatever the next next freaking term is. Ninety nine percent of the times you read that, you click onto like that article, like you know, what is this, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They're trying to push a course on you. They're trying to push some SEO course on you, pay 99 bucks for access. Like, I don't understand why people read that shit, then go, hey, this is like, this is a legit thing, but then don't realize, well, this dude's just trying to push a 99 dollar, 100 bucks, 150 bucks 
course on me. Like, why am I now so fully believing this tactic? But, you know, they, they, they pushing this buck on me, you know, and I'm, I'm just like, really, really, you know, and all of them, I mean, Neil Patel flogs it. Um, obviously he's done really, he, he, he does massive. He's, you know, it's a business for him. That's why he, you know, he just lets the SEO vitriol slide off his back because he's making millions, which is, you know, fair play. That's what it's all about at the end of the day. The problem is, is when people believe the shit um, and they read this stuff and they, uh, and they, they read it, they believe it, yet they won't actually pay for that course, implement it and realize it's a crock of shit. <laughs> you know, um, yeah, it's crazy. Nathan, look at the site, mate. Concentrate on the site. Fix what kind of assets you have. And half of the stuff that you're talking about is probably already within the, the, the assets of the business. And it doesn't necessarily have to be actually on the business. You know, a lot of companies that have got really terrible sites and need help um, and fix, they may have been around 50, 60 years. They may have sales brochures still. They may have sales teams that go around with sales brochures, sales PDFs, things like that. You, you know, the minute you start digging, you will, you know, you'll be amazed at what kind of material that you can use um, uh, that is already produced by the company that you just need to structure properly for them. Yeah. And I have a terrible feeling that there might not be a site to begin with in this instance. Uh, yeah, well, like, if you're thinking one of my keywords, I'm like, you know, if I, <laughs> you see, then again, I wouldn't be, if I was deciding on a new business, I wouldn't be looking at keywords. I'd be like, what is my business? Who am I selling it to? What is my product? Um, how am I going to structure this for future, if there is future growth? How am I going to actually create a site that can grow with that business? Then once I've planned that out and products, and then, you know, when it comes to the product and things like that, then you can start looking at different things like that. But I wouldn't still wouldn't start looking at keywords. Yeah. I was just thinking, you know, while you were talking to Tim, I, I accidentally um, built a site that had 70,000 keyword, active keywords. And um, uh, it was all, all for, for an accident. Um, um, I was too dumb to know who Neil Patel was. Um, luckily, I was too dumb to know he even existed. Um, but anyway... Um, uh, there it is. Sorry, Tim, you're muted. It's because us oldies stick on Facebook, mate. Je you know, none of the youngsters are on Facebook anymore. So, like, you need to, like, maybe check out Twitter every now and again and see how people slag you off. <laughs> ah, get on to your TikTok account, Tim. <laughs> oh, no, no, sorry. Look, I'm, 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 I'm not going that far. I'm not going that far. No way. <laughs> uh, uh, I cannot I've stand got to TikTok. You guys, uh, you've got to come over to Australia so that we can record a TikTok. Okay, that would be yeah, that would be interesting. It'd probably go down as like the worst TikTok ever. We'd probably have like fifty million views, but it'll be like, <laughs> look at these granddads fucking, <laughs> look at these granddads cracking out, cracking out some yeah. tunes, yeah. <laughs> or we can just sit back and drink Jamisons. Anyway, Richard Hearn, where are you? All right. Um, and we can't go past that. We can't leave here um, uh, without mentioning Tim Kappa's answer on the, the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. And he said, surely number one should be the current site, analyze, fix, um, utilize current assets, um, do it, fix it, try it. Um, and uh, 
it's funny that you, you and I think the same way, Tim. But you're not as good looking as me. Um, yeah, I know, Jim. Like, I, I hope I look as good as you, mate, when I'm when I'm when I'm your age, mate. I, I really do. <laughs> uh, yeah, number six on our run list. It's from George Savitas. It's titled "Where Should I Put It: Main Site or Subdomain?" Uh, George said, "I currently manage a property, a, a, a B and B, a property management business." Uh, on mydomainname.com. The website has referred to the property owners. The website has referred to the property owners. I've developed a new website for guests who will be able to book directly uh, the properties of the B&B management business. The website of the property management business is referring to the owner's the, the owners of the properties is already built and is doing good so far. Here are my options. I hope you guys are following this because I'm lost. Um, he said that, one, I can either move the website from mydomainname.com to partners.mydomainname.com and host the booking website under mydomainname.com or I can keep running the B&B management under my domain domainname.com and use booking.mydomain.com for the new booking website. Holy shit. <laughs> no, I think that um, won't make the website easy to share, long URL. Um, three, share the property booking system under a different domain name. What's your opinion? He has, a, he has a novel one. Why couldn't you just build the booking system into the actual property? <laughs> yeah, well, that, I mean, that's the thing. Um, I mean, you can't expect people to go from one website to another. Um, they, they want to be able to uh, click that action button now. I mean, so, uh, yeah. Go, Master. So the way I understood it, um, the way I understood the situation is that there's sort of the two sides. So there's on one side the owners of uh, BNBs, I suppose, uh, can list their properties on a site, and then so that's the owner side of things. And then there's the customer facing side, if you like, the sort of people who want to book BNBs. Um, so the two sort of the supply and demand side, if that makes sense. Um, if it's a matching site, so that it's a kind of place where BNB owners and users can sort of uh, match their needs, then I probably would put it on the same site. But making sure that it's clear that, you know, you're doing one or the other. So look, um, if he's in the situation where he's, like you said, multiple BNBs, then you're basically just an OTA, you're a booking system. So check out how all the others do it. Essentially, the user has to click through to book through. Um, it's on your, obviously, your own domain. Um, prob probably best to do a, it would be that domain and then a subdomain on that with that name, like your booking system thing. Um, that's how a lot of them do it. Um, uh, it, it depends, you know, like if you're, like booking.com and hotels.com don't typically do that. They're their own standalone domain. Um, but if you're using something where you're on a hotel site and you click through to book now, um, through to things like booking engines like Travel Click and stuff like that, they typically host it on each each property and their rooms, individual rooms, etc., are hosted within their own subdomain. That way, you can then do cross and um, cross uh, domain property analytics. They can properly track through uh, everything is linked up from the page from the the room. On main site, when they click through, it goes to that actual 
room page on that reservation site subdomain for that specific property. That's that's the way they typically do it. Um, so it all depends. Like I couldn't quite understand what part of it you were doing, but there's so there's two separate options there. I, I, I think he's under something with this, um, I don't know, um, Airbnb. Uh, um, yeah, uh, totally, totally. Um, he's, I mean, if he's gone and if he's creating a, a little micro booking platform for Airbnbs where they can control it, I, but on the flip side is, you know, if you register on Airbnb, you've got your own booking platform like with all other OTAs you log in and register he may have he may have may have created an interface between the site Airbnb and then the user which would be pretty cool because then they just use their own just one site they don't need to continuously check into Airbnb and log in and stuff like that um, like take payments via that, you know. So yeah, you know, if, if he's done something like that, that'd be pretty pretty cool. Yeah. All right, George. Um, good luck with it, mate. And um, we'll move on to number seven on our run list. Christopher Morgan uh, asks the question. It's titled "What are the differences between posts, pages?" projects and products. Um, Christopher said, I have a dumb SEO question, so hopefully I am in the right place. You certainly are. He said, I'm using WordPress with WooCommerce to sell products, brackets, uh, virtual slash digital downloadable ones in this instance, end bracket. He said, I was using Yoast as an SEO, plug SEO plugin, but have recently switched to rank map from an seo point of view shouldn't there be differences between posts pages projects and products and shouldn't they have slightly different rules and recommendations um, between them Well, there we go. Eamon just hit the nail on the head. That's just, <laughs> those are names created by, by a platform so that you can differentiate when, essentially also when they're building it, you see, to using which different things. Um, but from Google's point of view, it's a page. Um, it's, 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 a, it's, it's a web page and they, they call it just the same. So why do you want to differentiate it when Google doesn't? Hmm. If that makes sense. It certainly does. Yep. Yeah, I mean, um, Amun Johns explains, you know, in more detail and further um, as the thread progresses. Um, yeah, I think, I think forget about the um, um, the names and nomenclatura, as it were, of these things, because a web page is a web page. I think what is important is concentrate on the purpose that it serves. What does it, the individual page do? And for that, so if, for example, products page would have, in you know, in my understanding, a product. Right, a particular product would be placed on that page. What do you want to achieve with that? People buying it. You might have an informational page. That's still a web page, just as the product page is a web page. But then it has a different purpose. You might be able to mark it up differently using schema.org, for example. You know, the product page, the product pages can be marked up in certain ways, whereas a blog post or article page can be marked up differently. But, you know, they are, in essence, a web page. That fact doesn't change. So, 
So instead of sort of having this distinction in your head, um, so determined by whatever the product call call the uh, whatever the products call these pages, I would concentrate on the purpose of the pages. What do they serve to do? And what do you want to achieve with those pages? And start from there. Thank you, Mesa. Gee, I'm sorry for forgetting the name of your website earlier on tonight. Um, and we can't move on without thanking people like Ammon Johns, uh, um, the, the effort that they put into uh, uh, Dumbessia questions make it such a valuable resource and it's very much appreciated. Right, Paris Kamothi asks question eight on our run list, should I submit a new sitemap? Paris said, hi everyone, I have a dumb question. I recently updated my website with a lot of new content. I also changed a few of the old URLs of the website, um, 301 redirect done. Should I resubmit the same sitemap in Google's Search Console? And should I submit a new sitemap uh, in Google Search Console? If yes, then should I delete the old sitemap? Please suggest. Thank you. Well, it uh, depends if your sitemap sitemap's dynamic. If your sitemap is dynamic and it changes with your changes that you made to the site, and the sitemap's URL is exactly the same as the previous one, no, you don't need to resubmit, okay? However, what I would do, because if it has changed, you know, Google doesn't always continually crawl these. If you've changed some, made some, you know, changes or different pages or different URLs, um, you can, you, you know, you can, you can submit a URL to Google if it's a brand new one. Uh, although it's in the updated sitemap, they may not get to it for another week or whatever. Um, you may as well just tell them it's new. You'll see where actually when you when you submit it, they, they will actually say, oh, this is in your sitemap, but it'll say it's not indexed. Um, and so your sitemap has updated. They know about it, just they haven't got to it yet. But you can also do that and then request indexing and then get it in faster. So those are the kind of things. But if it's not dynamic, you need to physically update it. And then I would resubmit it, um, it once you've updated it. But if it's dynamic, no, you know, it's cool. But it will do it itself. Yeah. All right, moving right along. Number nine is from Faraz Ahmed, and he said, does PPC help um, with SEO campaigns? Does pay-per-click help with search engine optimization campaigns? Um, on what occasions do SEOs need PPC help to get the desired results? Right. So, look, I'm a bit scared because you previously asked about like rankings <laughs> okay so firstly ppc will just to get us out of the way will, will not help rankings in that sense but you know if, if this is a if, if 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 it's a if if it's a new product a new section on the site that you haven't got any content working for it yet you're still planning that all out but you you you, you know you want to start uh testing it and pushing that product then ppc is a great way to see uh, the queries that people come into or found that, that campaign for, which gives you an idea also on, on, on keywords which people are searching to find that. Of course, you're visible for it, so people are clicking through. You can also see, uh, you can also see if they actually even like the product. You know, you know the, the weirdest thing is people think they can sell crap online and just sell crap. But the greatest thing about anything is the greatest test is of any product is actually does it sell? Will the market buy it? Um, and especially it's quite important for affiliates because, you know, sometimes affiliates think this is the greatest thing. They pick a wrong kind of maker of a particular product. It's absolutely dirt cheap rubbish. 
and it never sells. So, you know, so PPC can help you give you a lot of information about um, a product, search queries around it, things like this. Um, um, so, yeah, you know, it can give you um, a lot of info, but just remember that, like, because you've asked ranking things quite a lot, I just want to say, like, it won't help ranking a page, just, just to be clear about that. Excellent, Tim. I've been privileged to, to be um, on the team of a, a, a long-term website. Um, it's um, a retail site, um, about 15 years old now. Um, but um, it's, it's always had the same formula. We've always used pay-per-click on there and the, the, the um, it's just part of uh, what we do. Obviously, uh, um, search engine optimization uh, uh, is, is most of it, but it, it, can, it, it does contain um, an element of, of pay-per-click. And uh, I, think it, I think if we took it away, we wouldn't do as well. Anyway. Right. Um, Let's move on. Becky Westmoreland uh, has given a good answer there. There can be value uh, in using pay to see if a set of keywords has value for your business before you invest in organic. Um, not sure how that works, but anyway. Um, I think um, I've, I've forgotten this gentleman's name, um, but... Um, Anyway, he said, are these the same for Googlebot? So it's question 10 on our run list. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure, uh, Dan, how this works. Um, looks like it's part of our scrape didn't um, get, get, get right. the whole question. From the answers, it seems that it's um, absolute URLs versus relative URLs. Oh, yeah. And, well, um, and uh, Perry Bernard said that for search engine op optimization, go with um, uh, an absolute. Um, uh, um, all right. We'll move to the next one, Masataki. Um, well, um, yeah, I think the thing, yeah, the way I'd answer it, assuming that it is an absolute versus relative question, is that I would, unless, and I cannot think of many instances where it would be a good idea, um, I would use absolute URLs. It avoids the risks of any um, misunderstanding arising. And I would, I would personally include a protocol as well, but that might be somewhat controversial. Okay. Well, let's move on. And that gentleman's name, Nathan Gadai. Um, Did you say Gadai, mate? What's that, mate? Did you say Gadai? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, go on. You know it was funny, all of you bastards. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Daniel say, yeah. Um, uh, all oh, right, I see. Um, let me see if I can. I, I'm not sure if I can put that in there. You can probably see that highlighted that there. Um. And then Daniel wants to know why we shouldn't make a, a TikTok account to publishing uh, SEO tips. Uh, there must be something in this, Tim. That's the second time tonight we're talking about TikTok. Yeah, getting your right. bankruptcies out. Apparently, it's, it's supposed to be the future of marketing, but uh, you know, I can't see uh, um, a, a picture of um, Tim Kappa. Um, um, 
Well, I, I can't. Uh, okay, that, that's we've run out of a question. Anyway, uh, what did I do wrong there? Uh, let me see if I can get it back. No, that was the last question. Um, all right. So, well, look, it is that time. Um, and we have answered the, all of the questions asked on the uh, um, Adam SEO Questions Facebook group. Uh, for some reason or other, I thought I'd counted them to be 12, but um, obviously wrong again. Anyway, we'll be back at the same time next week uh, to do this uh, all again. Um, but before we go, I must thank uh, people like Michael Martinez, uh, uh, Ammon Johns, uh, Richard Hearn, um, the pe people who answer questions uh, on uh, the Damasio Questions uh, Facebook group through the week. They make it a valuable resource, and we thank them very much for that. And, of course, our team here, uh, uh, Richard Hearn, Micah fisher Kirshner couldn't be here tonight, but normally... Uh, the last couple of weeks have been. Um, Tim Kappa is um, uh, uh, the, the mainstay, I think, of um, dumb, dumb SEO questions. We've been, we've been uh, together since way back when, Tim. <laughs> it's been a long time, Jim. Since uh, before you were senile, mate. <laughs> <laughs> you, no, you, room, you two. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> And Masataki Wasa, of course. Uh, David Razam uh, is another. Um, he, he's uh, currently uh, putting together a lot of work to make somebody uh, busy on the bank holiday in the UK. Um, yeah, anyway, thank you, everybody. Um, and we'll be back uh, next week as soon as I figure, and we'll be gone now as soon as I figure out which button to